from Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. said you wanted to see me. Yeah. It better be important, mister. I don't make a habit of coming running with some saddle punk whistles. Maybe you hadn't ought to make a habit of calling people saddle punks. <laughs> no offense, just an expression. Sure. I came up from the Pecos country. Been here in Dodge about a week. Maybe you've seen me around. I've seen you. I've been talking to people. Oh? Everybody tells me you were a big shot back in Abilene. Had all the games sewed up, three or four saloons paying off, a couple of hotels and so on. Then the boom busted and you come here, and you got nowhere. Know why? You're talking, you tell me why. Dillon. A fellow named Matt Dillon, a U.S. Marshal. You tried to scare him, and he wouldn't scare. Tried to buy him, and wouldn't buy. Tried breaking him, wouldn't break. So? Be worth $5,000 to you if I kill him? Might. All right, get it in gold. Keep it handy. My heart? Yeah, you're hired. <laughs> Chester, I know you've been sick and you still got a cold, but is there anything else wrong? What do you mean, Mr. Dillon? Well, you haven't said three words in the last 20 minutes. That's not like you. Well, Mr. Dillon, did you ever get a funny feeling somebody was keeping an eye on you? Well, yeah, but... Uh... Well, I got one right now. <laughs> Chester, I think you've got a touch of the heebie-jeebies. Maybe... But I tell you, I know there's somebody... Well, as somebody... far as I can see, there's nobody in the whole place even paying any attention to us. Somebody is. I had the same feeling the day the Butler brothers come back from Santa Fe. Yeah? I didn't even know they was in town, but I knew somebody was getting ready to call us. And about six that evening, they made their play, remember? Yeah, I remember. I was one of the pallbearers the next day. Well, it's the same thing now. There's going to be trouble, Mr. Dillon. You can bet on it. <laughs> I think you got the wind up over nothing, Chester. Why, the town's never been quieter. Jail's been empty for two weeks. Only new faces around is that bunch of trail drivers that came up from the Pecos. They're all strangers. None of them got any reason to hold a grudge. Oh, uh, there you be. What? I've been looking all over for you, Marshal. Oh, hiya, Billy. I waited over to the jail for nigh on an hour. I got to talk to you, Mr. Dillon. Uh, I I'm sorry, Billy, but... Every time I give you money, you, you buy yourself a bottle and then oh, stay blind drunk uh, for two uh, days. It ain't money this time, Mr. Dillon. I got something to tell you. Oh? What? Something I hear. These couple fellers talking over to the livery stable. They didn't see me. I was back at the water trough. <clears throat> sort of, well, resting, you might say. Yeah, I know. 
Well, you know how it is, Mr. Dillon. A man gets dry in this prairie country and he just What right were they came... talking about, Billy? <laughs> about you. One of them offered to kill you for $5,000 in gold, and the other and took him up on it. Uh, there, what did I tell you? Who were they, Billy? Did you know them? No, sir. It was dark, and I didn't recognize their voices. They was already there when I woke up, and they left right after that. Well, maybe they... Maybe it was just some kind of a joke. Oh, it didn't sound that way to me. No, sir, it's no joke, Mr. Dillon. I told you I felt it. There's somebody in this room right now, somebody who's been hired to kill you. Yeah, but who? I don't know. Can you figure who'd want to do such a thing, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I can figure a dozen or two, Chester. Well, if, if Chester, was... look, as far as Dodge City is concerned, I'm the law. Now, there are plenty of men here who'd think they'd do better without any law. I guess it's nothing personal. Well, personal or not, it's got me jumping sideways at my own shadow. Ah, here we are. Come on. Well, good morning, Marshal. I haven't seen you since the robbery last month. Attempted robbery, Mr. Greeley. Yeah, so it was, thanks to you. Well, Mr. Dillon, the bank's at your service. What can I do for you? Give me some information, if you will. Well, if it isn't confidential... It is, but I want it anyway. Well, I hardly know what to say. Perhaps you'd better step into my office. This way, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, after you, Mr. Greeley. Now, just what was it you wanted to know? I want to know whether one of your customers has drawn $5,000 in gold from the bank in the last few days. Any particular person in mind? No, that's what I want to find out. Well, I hope this won't go any farther, Marshal. So somebody did, huh? Who was it, Mr. Greeley? I certainly wish to make it clear that I don't approve of this man, but after all, he is a good customer, and it's not my place Yeah, yeah, to... I know. Who was it? Lawson Hale. Lawson Hale? Yeah, he took the gold out just this morning, as a matter of fact. Said he was working on a cattle deal of some sort. Yeah, figures all right. Hale's tried to move in on this town ever since he came here. Every time he's tried, I've stopped him. I do hope you'll regard this as confidential. Yeah, you? sure, sure. Well, Chester, we know who one of them is now. Yeah, but who's the other, Mr. Dillon? The one who's actually going to do it? Some punk who wants $5,000 real bad and doesn't care how much he has to do to get it? That sure doesn't narrow it down any. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sure quiet tonight, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Not many people out. No, not many. The moon is throwing quite a bit of light. Yeah, I guess it is. Kindly makes a target out of a man. Yeah, kind of. If somebody was out to shoot somebody, this would sure be a good night for somebody to do it. I suppose so. Mr. Dillon. Hmm? Do you mind if I make a comment? Well, I thought that's what you were doing, Chester. Let, let's go on back to the jail and stay off the streets. This way you're just asking for it. Chester, if it's going to come, it's going to come. I'd rather meet it halfway than to sit and wait for it. Asking for it, asking for it, that's what you're doing. It's been two days now. It gets on your nerves. When you go out to bring a man in, you know you may have trouble and you're ready for it. But, but this way, and not knowing who or when or why or... Yes, sir, well, I understand, I... Mr. Dillon. It, it, it kindly bothers a man. Yeah. Let's walk down to the Texas Trail. <laughs> Good to see you, Matt. You've been avoiding us the last couple of days. 
busy, Kitty. Something bothering you, Matt? Bothering me? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever gave you an idea like that? Mr. Dillon? What is it, Chester? Lawson Hale just come in. He's down the bar there. Oh, yeah. Maybe you ought to have a talk with him. Well, that's one way. That's the one I haven't tried yet. Excuse us, will you please, Kitty? Well, sure, Matt. Oh, whatever it is, sir. be careful. Huh? Yeah. That link was wide open. Yeah. I had it right in the palm of my hand. Is that so? The minute the trail drive had hit town, the boys had grabbed their pay and they'd head yeah, straight. Yeah, well, well, well. Something I can do for you? Yeah, I want to talk to you, Mr. Hale. Well, I don't see anything stopping you. <laughs> we'll move down the bar a ways, if you don't mind. It's kind of private. Sorry, Marshal. I'm fine right here. I said we'll move down the bar. <laughs> if it's that important. Pardon me, boys. The Marshal's all head up about it. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Far enough? Yeah, this is far enough. Lawson, I understand you've hired yourself a gunman. Sent him out to get me. Offered him $5,000 in gold. I don't know what you're talking about, Dylan. Wouldn't care to tell me his name. No, I don't think so. You see, I don't know anything about it. What's he waiting for? He's had two days now and he hasn't made a move. Like I said, Dylan... Why don't you I... do the job, Hale? You're wearing a gun. Maybe save yourself some money. I've got no quarrel with you. You mean you're yellow? Scared to call your own play? I said I've you're got You're a no... weaseling, no good coward, Hale. I let it ride for the time being. Yeah, I thought you would. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. Let's go get some fresh air. Well, I guess he's just not the kind to take chances, Mr. Dillon. And not when he's got a hired killer out prowling somewhere. Chester, I'm going to run him out of Dodge if it's the last thing I ever do. Dodge can stand it. If I only knew who he'd hired, then I could force the play myself. This blasted business of having to leave it up to the other man. Waiting, waiting. Near the... Over there by the stable. Yeah, I saw the flash. Maybe you got it, Mr. Dunn. I don't know. Let's move in and find out. Yes, sir. Watch yourself, Chester. You may be playing possum. Yes, sir. The flash was right here by the corner. Yeah. Well, that's that. Looks like he got away, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, he's gone. Took one shot and then ran for cover. He'll be back. Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, every Sunday afternoon, Robert Trout with the World News brings you up to the minute on CBS Radio. A special feature on this program every Sunday is a flying visit from one of our noted overseas news correspondents. Remember, tomorrow, for well-rounded views of the news at home and everywhere, don't miss Robert Trout with the news of the world on most of these same CBS radio stations. And now for the second act of Gunsmoke. My cold sure no better tonight, Mr. Dillon. My 
That fire sure feels good. Yeah. Yes, sir, the old jail seems kind of cozy when a man's ailing like I am. Anyway, it's sure a lot better than prowling those streets waiting for somebody to put a bullet in the back of his neck. Chester, will you stop squeaking the chair? Well, sorry, Mr. Dillon. Yell at me like that, Junior, I'm feeling. Two more days gone by and he hasn't made another move. Yes, sir. That cottonwood sure burns up fast. I guess I better shake down the stove, throw another chunk of wood. Wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute. There might be a way at that, Chester. Loss and hail. That's the only fact we're sure of. Loss and hail. It'd be kind of hard to prove anything, Mr. Dillon. Who said anything about proving it? I got an idea. Come on. one will we try first, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, the Texas Trail, I guess. He'll either be there or at the Longhorn. All right, Mr. Dillon. What you gonna do? I'm gonna arrest him, since he won't fight. You saw him back down the other night. Yes, but you got no evidence. M- Mr. Dillon, you can't make it stick. I don't intend to, Chester. Well, then I don't see what What I saying. can do is scare him. And if I figure him right, I think he's gonna scare easy. Mm. Maybe so, but all the ah, same... look. Look, there he is, Chester. Just came out of the Longhorn. A couple of fellas with him, Mr. Dillon. You, you don't suppose one of them could be... No, there? no, they're hanging around for the free drinks. There's not an ounce of nerve in the three dozen of them. Come on, let's take him. Yes, sir. You're right, the whole herd. The whole herd? Hail? Yeah. Hold it, just right where you are. <laughs> what seems to be the trouble now, Marshal? No trouble. Unless you want to make some. You're under arrest. What for? I'll think of something later. Stick out your hands. Whoa. You're taking me in without even making a charge? I'll remind you there's witnesses here. Yeah, so I notice. When they're not hanging around you, they're around somebody else. What have you done, Hale? Hired them, too? I asked you what the charge was, Marshal. Vagrancy. Vagrancy? As far as I know, you've never had any visible means of support as long as you've been a Dodge. I'll match any dollar of yours with a hundred better ones. Well, that's fine. That'll help pass the time. Now stick out your hands. Oh, look here, Marshal. Shut up. All right, Chester, put the cuffs on him. Yes, sir. All right, hold still now. Dylan, I'll... I'll break you for this. It's been tried before. All right, boys, break it up. The party's over. You've had your last free drink out of this pump. All right, you, let's go to jail. Keep walking, Hale. It's the last cell on the left. I'll break you, Dylan. So help me. Well, you've been trying it for a year. I'm still around. But you won't be after this. I'll take this up. With Hold up. up. Wait till Chester gets the door unlocked. Haven't used this cell for so long. I've almost forgot which pieces. There we are. Vagrancy. I'm living in the best room in the commercial house. Inside, Hale. Now go on, move. No. Now stick your hands up. You won't need those cuffs in here. All right. Make yourself at home. Shut the door, Chester. Yes, sir. Dylan, you've got nothing to hold me on. I'll be out of here by tomorrow noon. Oh, I doubt that. In fact, there's a pretty good chance you'll never get out of that cell. Not alive, at least. What are you talking about? According to the law, I've got a right. The law, huh? You've broken it every chance you've got. Tried to break the men who serve it, like you've tried to do with me, for instance. But when your own neck gets caught, you start hiding behind the law. Nevertheless, the law... All right, fine. Right now, the law out here is kind of sketchy. Some things it covers, some things it doesn't. Well, that's where I come in. 
Now, this little affair between you and me is one of the things the law doesn't quite cover. So I'm going to run it my way. That kind of talk won't help you any, Dylan. You hired a man to kill me, offered him $5,000 to get me out of the way. You can't prove that. He's made one try and he's missed. He's still around Dodge. Somewhere waiting and he's going to try again. But I don't know who he is. So all the odds are with him. That is your problem, Dylan, not mine. I don't know anything about that. You know what'll happen, though, if he does get me. The first thing Chester's going to do is come straight back here to the jail and pump a couple of bullets through these bars here. Huh? Your boy may kill me, Hale, but you're not going to live to profit by it. Oh, he wouldn't do it. Shoot down a helpless... Pr- oh, neither one of you would do it. Chester and I have been friends for a long time. Why don't you ask him whether he'd do it or not? No question about it, Mr. Dillon. Of course I'd do it. Oh, no, you wouldn't. Well, you hired somebody to shoot Mr. Dillon in the back. I don't see where you got any kick coming. Well, there's your answer, Mr. Hale. That's why I arrested you. Come on, Chester. Let's go look the town over. Well, no, no, it's, it's tonight that he's going. Who's going to do what? I don't know, Marshal. I don't know anything about it. No, that's too bad. If I knew his name, I'd have a lot better chance, you know. So would you. Well, we'll see you later, Hale. Or anyway, Chester will. No, Dylan, you can't do it. No, you, no go, don't go on. He'll get you short. Dylan, no, wait. I, I'll tell you his name. All right. He's uh, a trail driver. Came up from the Pecos last week. I doubt if you know him. His name is Ed Granger. Ed Granger? Yeah, I've seen him around the bars. Dark-haired, surly-looking, scar across his cheek. That's him. Of course, I'll deny all of this in court, you understand? Yeah, sure, I understand. Come on, Chester, let's go get him. Look, he's here all right, Mr. Dillon. Over there by the pine. Yeah. Looks like he's by himself. What you gonna do? Rest him? Well, there's no evidence, Chester. The only way I see is to make it personal. Let's go. Yes, sir. Now, I want you to stay out of it, Chester. Just cover me, that's all. Whatever you say, Mr. Dillon. Your name, Ed Granger? Might be. What about it? You know who I am, don't you? Judging by the star, I reckon you're a U.S. Marshal. You ought to do better than that. After all, I'm worth $5,000 to you. Yes, sir. Who says so? Lawson Hale. What? Your memory's getting better, huh? I don't know what you're talking about, Mark. Sure you do. That deal you made with Hale. He told me all about it after I threw him in jail and persuaded him a little bit. Well, I told you, I don't know anything... You're about... wearing a gun there, Granger. Why don't you draw it and go for $5,000? Take a chance. This fellow you're talking about's in jail. I reckon he wouldn't have anybody working for him now, would he? You tell me. I got no reason to draw on you, Marshal. Not unless my back's turned, huh? I think you're as yellow as Hale is. This won't do you any good. I ain't drawing. You tried to kill me night before last, Granger. Can you prove that? If I could, you'd either be in jail or you'd be dead. Well, since you can't prove it, what's the argument? Just that I don't like the idea of somebody trying to shoot me in the back. If you're any man at all, we'll settle this here and now. Now, leave me alone, Marshal. I haven't done anything. (gasps) Now, you still figure you got no reason to draw on me? No reason. 
I ain't drawing. You got ten minutes to get out of town. And when you're out, stay out. Don't come back now or ever. You understand? Yes, sir. You can start right now. Must be nearly midnight, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, about that, I guess, Chester. My, this is sure one day I'm glad is over. <laughs> yeah, so am I. At least I can breathe a little easier now. Mm -hmm. I think I'll get this fire built up a little bit, Mr. Dillon. No, leave, leave it, Chester. Let's go take care of our prisoner first. Huh? Hey, we still haven't got any evidence. What, what are we going to do about him? Same as with Granger. Turn him loose and run him out of town. We well, should have done it months ago. You got the keys? Yes, sir. Right here in my... Mr. Dillon? Huh? What are you looking at? Oh. Granger must have stopped by here on his way out of town. He, he must have got Hale over to the window for a talk and then grabbed him and cut his throat right there. Yeah. Figured Hale had sold him out, I guess. Got a bulletin on the wire, Chester. Wanted for murder, Ed Granger. All right, sir, Mr. Dillon. I guess Hale got pretty much what he bargained for. He hired himself a killer in order to kill him. He got it. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Lawrence Dobkin, Jack Crucian, and Ralph Moody. Parley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Like Old Man River, the comedy just keeps rolling along every Sunday night when CBS Radio presents Amos and Andy. Tomorrow night, over most of these same CBS radio stations, the kingfish is sure to be up to his usual monkey business. And it's sure to make a monkey out of gullible Andy Brown. Listen for yourself. Don't let one single minute of the fun get away. Tomorrow and every Sunday night, it's Amos and Andy on CBS Radio. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy open fire on your funny bone every Sunday night on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>